thin lenses. All these structures are known as thin lenses. You must already be familiar with them. Thin means uh, this, this, this distance is very small. This distance is very small. Okay, they are thin lenses. And uh, depending on depending on uh, their shape, okay, depending on the shape, uh, they are given different names. For example, this is uh, known as a double convex. Double. Double convex. Okay, or convex. Okay. Depending on the shape. Okay, so what is lens first of all? Oh, it, it's a transparent medium, first of all. Transparent transparent medium uh, surrounded by spherical faces. Okay, spherical faces, or uh, it can be plain also. So this is one spherical surface, spherical surface, spherical surface, plane surface, spherical, spherical, spherical plane. Okay. Understand it. Depending on shape, all these names, all these names are given depending on the shape. Both surfaces are convex, so double convex or simply convex. This is a plano convex. Plano convex. One surface is plane, other one is convex. So this becomes plano concave. Plano concave. Okay, this becomes double concave. Double concave. Or simply concave. Okay, this becomes a convex. So, convex. So, concave. Okay, convex. So, concave. One surface is convex, other one is concave. But, but, but you see, you Wherever you will, when you look at this lens from this side, it becomes convex or concave. You can also look at it the same thing from this side, then, then it appears like this. Okay, So both are same, both are actually same. There is no difference. Okay, You can call this concave or convex also. Concave or convex also. Okay, They're both are same. Now, these are spherical surfaces, so they are going to have certain radius. Let's say that this radius is R1, this is radius is R2, this is R1, this is R2, like this, this is R. What, what, is, what is radius of a plane surface? Can you guess what it is? It is infinite. Infinite here. This is R1 and R2. Okay. R, R and infinite. Radius of a plane surface is infinite. Here it is R1 and R2. Okay, now here one special thing they are known as uh, this is double convex it is also known as equiconvex equiconvex if r1 is equal to r so if radius of both surfaces are equal it is also known as equiconvex so generally when we say convex and do not specify anything by that we mean equiconvex similarly here it is equiconvex Equi-concave if R1 is equal to R. This is general uh, thing about lens, okay, about uh, on their shapes. We have different types. Now let's look at few terms associated with thin lenses. Okay. The first term, okay, the first term is principal axis. Principal axis okay. is line joining line joining centers of both surfaces. Both surfaces. Okay. It is it is a common it is a common normal. Understand this common normal. Principal axis will be a common normal to both surfaces. To both surfaces. Okay. That means if I have a light ray passing through principal axis, it is going to pass undeviated. Okay. All right. So now if I have uh, this uh, surface, you see this is the first surface. This is the first surface, and this is the second surface. This is the second surface. 
where will be radius of this first surface center of this first surface center of this first surface is going to be on this right side here let's say that this is the center of the first surface center of this second surface is going to be on the left here this becomes c2 and when i join this line when i join these two centers this is going to be my principal axis it is my principal axis it will be common not so if i have a light ray okay passing through this principal axis it is going to pass undeviated it is going to pass undeviated okay. if i have a, a structure like this let's say this is a, my concave and this is my plane for example concave and plane this is the first surface and the second surface now this has no center <laughs> as such okay what will be center of this surface it is going to be somewhere here this is c1 center of this now how do i find principal axis what i will, I will do is i will drop a perpendicular on this line because it has to be common normal okay so if, if i drop a perpendicular here on this the second surface okay so this becomes my principal axis okay this is principal axis what is the significance light passing through principal axis it passes undeviated because why because this is a common normal normal incidence no deviation principal axis okay now second second is the known as center okay center of lens also known as optical center center or optical center okay optical center okay a point on principal axis okay through which through which light passes undeviated okay it's a point on principal axis okay generally generally it is inside lens but in some cases it can also be outside outside of lens what is the meaning of inside first of all it is going to be on the principal axis this is the principal axis so it is a point on principal axis okay it can be inside inside means at some point here some point inside the lens it can also be outside okay in some cases generally in most of the cases it is inside okay so we have to uh, assume that it is inside by default it is inside in some special cases it can be outside also now what is the uh, meaning of this? this let's say that this is my lens okay and this is my principal axis okay so this is my center let's say this is my center optical center let me call it as o let me call it as o o is the optical center okay so if, if a light hits this optical center it is going to pass undeviated okay a light along principal axis it is of course passing through this optical center it passes undeviated okay so in, in any type of lens in any type of lens okay so if i have a light a light which which, which is incident along this optical center it is going to pass undeviated all these things are going to help us drawing gray diagram okay note down these two points now the next term which is a very important term and some sometimes very confusing also very important and sometimes very confusing okay it is a second focus okay let me let me clean all of this okay it is not required you must have noted it but i think okay the focus is fine i hope okay now let's look at other terms other term is the second the third term is second focus second focus f2 okay also called also called focus 
ओनली फोकस ओके और प्रिंसिपल फोकस प्रिंसिपल फोकस देन देन इट शुड हैव बीन कॉल्ड फर्स्ट फोकस बट ड्यू टू सम रीजन वॉट एवर रीजन इट इज कॉल्ड सेकेंड फोकस ओके दैट्स फाइन ओके एंड देन वन अदर इज वन अदर इज लेट राइट इट ही अदर साइमल्टेनियसली फर्स्ट फोकस फर्स्ट फोकस ओके एफ वन बिफोर आई डिफाइन इट okay if i if i started to define it, it it becomes a little confusing i'm not going to define it i'm just going to draw the ray diagram you also draw the ray diagram keep that ray diagram in your notebook as well as in your head <laughs> because that is very important okay let's try to understand it second focus first focus through ray diagrams because that's what is ultimately important for us okay oh, it's like this let's say that i have this lens lens okay and this is my principal axis okay light rays are incident normally light rays are incident normally okay this is the case of this is the case of a convex lens this is a convex lens okay and let, let me take one other case here this is a concave lens here also the light rays are incident normally normal incidence in from infinity they are coming from infinity they are coming from infinity okay that means object is kept at infinity u is infinity here also u is infinity okay now after passing through lens okay the point on principal axis through which at which they converge okay the point after passing through the lens you can note on the definition also after second focus is a point on principal axis okay at which the light rays coming from infinity converge or diverge from okay so they will either converge they, in case of this lens convex lens they are going to converge at one point here this point will become second focus this is known as second focus okay in case of in case of a concave lens here concave lens they are going to diverge from that point after passing through lens they are going to diverge from this point on the principal axis this point is known as second focus this is second focus f2 okay and then the distance between optical center this middle of lens middle center and this second focus it will be second focal length second focal length. okay here also this will be second focal length f2 focus focal focus is a point focal length is this the distance between lens the optical center and the focus this is a, this is a second focus okay now what it means is if my object is at infinity if if, if my object is at infinity image will be at second focal length image will be at second focal length okay do you understand this properly now one other thing this is a parallel beam of light after passing through this lens they converge so this is also known as a converging lens a converging lens okay this is uh, if they are diverging this is known as a diverging lens diverging lens okay we call it convex lens we call it convex lens and here it is concave lens okay understand this very very clearly very clearly convex lens and concave lens we call it convex lens because of its shape both surfaces are convex we call it 
कॉन्केव लेंस बिकॉज ऑफ इट्स शेप बोथ सर्फेसिस आर कॉन्केव इट इज बिकॉज ऑफ देयर जियोमेट्रिकल प्रॉपर्टी वी कॉल इट कन्वर्जिंग एंड डाइवर्जिंग बिकॉज ऑफ देयर ऑप्टिकल प्रॉपर्टीज बिकॉज दिस लेंस इट कन्वर्जे द लाइट बीम एंड दिस लेंस डाइवर्जेज इट डाइवर्जेज इट इज स्प्रेड्स द लाइट ओके इट इज नॉट नेसेसरी नोट डाउन दिस पॉइंट इट इज नॉट नेसेसरी दैट अ कॉन्वेक्स लेंस विल ऑलवेज बी कन्वर्जिंग एंड एंड अ कॉन्केव लेंस विल ऑलवेज बी डाइवर्जिंग इट इज नॉट नेसेसरी वी आर गोइंग टू सी एग्जाम्पल्स एग्जाम्पल्स वेयर अ कॉन्वेक्स लेंस बिकम्स डाइवर्जिंग एंड अ कॉन्केव लेंस बिकम्स कन्वर्जिंग ओके यू अंडरस्टैंड दिस वेरी वेल अंडरस्टैंड इट वेरी वेल बट नॉर्मली normally if nothing else is specified normally okay then convex lens is converging and concave lens is diverging norm norm this is the normal behavior but under certain conditions their behavior changes we are going to see look look at those conditions so this is a second focus okay let's let's look at the first focus okay let's look at the first focus this is first focus okay, it is f1 okay here also i am just going to draw the ray diagram and from the ray diagram you, you have to deduce what is the meaning of it okay if you want it you, you can note it down in your own language okay because if, if i start uh, defining it then things become really confusing okay so let, let's not define it here let's just look at the actual thing okay the essence of that now what is this <coughs> it's like this i have this uh, convex lens shape is convex okay now light ray passing through some point here okay there is one light ray one light a random light ray it passes through a point on the principal axis like this okay i have this light ray i have this light ray here it is passing through certain point okay now there will be a point there is one point through which if if the light rays pass through that point then then after passing through the lens they become parallel to principal axis after passing through that point after passing through a special special point then there is going to be one just one point not every point not this point not this point not this point there is one one fixed point one special point so if the light ray passes through that point okay then after coming out from the lens it becomes parallel to principal axis this is known as first focus this is known as first focus okay this is first focus and uh, the distance from lens this becomes f1 the first focal length similarly in case of a concave lens concave lens okay so there will be a point okay if 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 the light ray appears to be going towards that point here okay there will be a point okay so if the light ray appear to be to be passing through that point and after refraction from the lens it will become parallel to principal axis okay then that point is known as first focus first focus okay and the distance between first focus and this optical center here is known as first focal length this first focal length do you understand this do you understand this what will be the relation between first focal length and and the second focal length you look at the diagram very very carefully okay we are going to solve problems right now where it will become very confusing okay so the ray diagram on the center very very carefully okay now note note this term if if lens is surrounded by same medium by same medium on both sides on both sides then f1 is equal to f2 is equal to f that's it 
something we have to understand. I have this lens. On one side, I have air. On the other side, also I have air. Or this lens is dipped in water. On both sides, I have same medium. Then both focal lens, F1 and F2, focal lens, the magnitude, the magnitudes, okay, are going to be, uh, they are going to be same magnitudes. F1 and F2 are going to be, that means these two distances are going to be same. Okay. But if the medium is different, medium on one side is air, on the other side it is water, then they are going to be different. Then they are going to be different. Okay. Now, let us look at uh, the properties. Optical property. Here, a parallel beam of light converges. That is why converging lens. Here we see, I have a diverging beam. Diverging beam, it, it becomes parallel. This also is converging. This also is a process of converging. Here, I have, I have this, uh, I have this converging beam. Converging beam, it becomes parallel. So this is this lens is diverging, the, is spreading the light rays. So this this becomes diverging. The nature remains the same. It is diverging here. It is diverging here also. Also, one other case. <coughs> Let's use a, this is sign convention. Let us use this sign convention, okay, sign convention, okay, okay, light rays are going towards right, okay, so this becomes, this becomes our positive, this becomes our negative. Second focus, which is generally called as focus, when I, when I, when I only say focus, that means it is the second focus, okay, for this converging lens is positive, okay, second focus. Second focus, focal length or focal length of a converging lens is positive of a diverging lens is negative. Okay. Note this note down this point. I am not saying convex lens. A very fine difference. I am not saying that focal length of a convex lens is positive. No. It is not necessary because a convex lens can become diverging also. A concave lens can become converging also. Okay. I am not saying convex and concave. I am saying converging and diverging. Okay. So if I have a lens which is converging, that means this 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 is the light ray, it is converging it, it, it at some point. In that case, the focal length is going to be the second focal length, or simply the focal length, okay, is going to be positive always, no matter whether it is a convex lens or a concave lens. Converging lens, always positive. Okay. A diverging lens, this is my incident light. Okay. It diverges like this. Okay. So the, it is it is diverging from this point. So this becomes my second focal length or focal length. Okay. It is going to be negative. It is going to be negative. Okay. So in so here, if if, 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 if I have this lens, if I have this lens, and the, this is the light beam, okay. And if, if it diverges. If it diverges, okay, then in this case focal length will be negative, not positive. We are going to see, we are going to see problems, okay. Later on, just, just we are going to see. Let us come back here. Note down this point, okay. Let us uh, let's come back here, second focus and first focus, okay. Light passing through first focus becomes parallel. What if light passes through second focus? Okay, let's say I have a case like this. I have a case like this. This is an F1 here and this is F2 here. Okay. What will happen if a light ray appears to be heading towards F2? A 
light ray appears to head towards F2. What will happen? What will happen? Okay. Or if I have uh, this uh, diverging lens, this is my diverging lens. Okay. This is F2 and this is F1. Okay. What will happen if a light ray passes through F2 like this here? Will it become parallel? Will it become parallel? Okay. Can I write that? Can I say that this is the this that's how the light rays will go out? This is not correct. Then what will happen? It's a converging lens. This is a converging beam. After passing through this converging lens, they are going to converge further. Okay. So that's how they are they are going to pass through the lens. Okay. This, this will be the correct ray diagram. This is diverging lens. After passing through the lens, are, are they going to become parallel? Are they going to become parallel? Okay, no. So this is this will, this is not correct. Okay. After passing through the lens, this is a diverging beam. This is a diverging beam. Diverging beam. After passing through a diverging lens, it becomes more divergent, even more divergent. Okay. So this is what is going to happen. This, this is correct. Okay. So they will diverge further. It was already a diverging lens. It, it was already a diverging beam. After passing through a diverging lens, it becomes further diverged. <laughs> okay. So look at look at these ray uh, diagrams. Okay, and remember them. Very very important. Okay, very important that you remember them clearly. Okay, let's uh, do few problems. Based on this ray diagram first. Based only on this ray, these ray diagrams. Okay. Question is like this. A parallel beam of light. incident on given systems finally comes out to be parallel finally comes out to be parallel okay find separation Find separation. Okay. First case, I have this uh, convex lens. Okay. Focal length is f1. This focal length is f2. Okay. When I say f1 and f2, so I am referring to which focal length? First focal length or second focal length? Okay. Both. I'm when I say only focal length, only focal length. That means that means I'm that means both focal lengths are same. First focal length, second focal length, both are same. The lens is surrounded by same medium on both sides. Okay. So when I say f1, so this is the magnitude. It is the magnitude of focal length. Okay. F1 and f2. Light ray is hitting this system like this. Parallel light beam. After passing through this system, after passing through this system, it comes out parallel. Okay. Then what is going to be separation between them? Okay. Now second. This is the second system. Okay. This is principal axis. I have a common principal axis. This also comes out parallel. Okay, this is F1, this is F2. Okay, find out. Third, let's say that it is it's like this. Or let's say it's like this. <laughs> okay. How it is going to come out parallel? What should be separation between them? 
or let's uh, do one more just okay we will not do many problems okay just uh, this Radius, this is focal length. This is focal length f. Okay. What should be separation such that such that such that a parallel beam of light comes out parallel to itself? Okay. So in this case, the light will pass through the system. In this case, it is going to be reflected. Going to be reflected. Okay. What should be separation? This is the radius of this uh, mirror. Okay, let's do these problems. In problem sheet, you are going to find many more problems based on this okay there is no formula here you just have to look at the properties and remember the uh, ray diagrams okay then you are going to answer it how to how to do that okay. let me solve the first one from this one you will get some idea forget about second lens just look at the first lens okay we are going to solve this first problem this is uh, my first lens, F1. This is the principal axis. Light is incident parallel to principal axis. After passing through the lens, what is going to happen? It is going to converge okay, at its second focus. It is going to converge like this. Okay. This distance from here to here, it becomes F1 f1 is not first focal length f1 is the focal length of this lens it is equal to both first and second focus both are same i am saying that focal length is f1 that means first and second focus both are same its magnitude is equal to f1 that's it that's it now then i have if i do not have any other lens the, the light rays are going to converge at, a, at one point and then they will go out okay here I will get one image. Okay. Now I want to keep another lens such that such that such that the light rays finally become parallel. Now if I have if I have this uh, lens, I want my light beam to come out parallel. Okay. Then the incident light must pass through a special point. What is that point? It should be focused. Okay. They must have passed through this point here. This is known as first focus, okay. And this distance is known as first focal length. Okay. That means I have to arrange my second lens in this manner, such that such that this point, this point, which is second focus for the first lens, it becomes first focus for the second lens. Okay. So if if if, if I keep my second lens like this, such that this point becomes first focus, then after passing through this, it will become parallel. Okay, then what should be this focal length? This is equal to F2. Answer. What is answer? It is going to be equal to F1 plus F2. Okay, in the first case. Now, can you, can you think uh, and apply your logic similarly to answer the remaining problems? Okay, let's see. <laughs> okay, second one. <coughs> Second one, okay. So this is my first lens. Okay, this is the principal axis. Incident rays are like this. Now, this is my second focus for first lens. This lens will be equal to F1. Do not be confused with these different terms. Second focus, first focus. I'm calling this second focus but writing F1 here. <laughs> you should not be confused. But think about it, okay. Think about it with cool head. <coughs> now, I have this uh, convex lens here. Now, how should I put my place my convex lens such that this light ray becomes parallel? Okay. If I want a parallel beam of light from a, from a concave lens, this, this diverging lens, okay, then then the light rays must appear to be passing towards its, its first focus here. Okay. Then, after passing through the lens, they will become parallel. Okay. Then I will have to place my lens, second lens, okay, such that this kind of this kind of the light rays, the light rays appear. This this light ray, which is coming out from this this lens, 
they, they must appear to be heading towards the first focus of this lens. Then they will become patterned. Okay, that means I will have to keep my lens something like this here. Okay, so now they cannot reach this point. They cannot reach this point. Okay, so what happens is they they will become patterned. Okay. They are going to become parallel like this. What should be this distance? This is f2. Okay, so what is the answer? Answer is f1 minus f2. f1 minus f2 in this case. Okay, similarly, we'll look at the third case. Third, what do you think? Third. Okay, third case, I have this uh, lens, after passing through lens, they are going to converge here. Okay. Now, there is a mirror here, the mirror is going to reflect, here the mirror is going to reflect. Now, how should I place my mirror? How should I place my mirror? If, 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 I, if I place it this way, let's say, Let's say, let's say that I, I keep my mirror here, then these light rays are going to reflect like this. Okay. Light rays are going to reflect like this. And after passing through the lens, okay, they, they, they are going to converge. Okay. So they, they, okay. So this is the original direction. They are going to converge a little bit. Okay. I'm not sure where, where they are going to what what is going to happen. Okay. They may not be parallel. They may not be parallel. Okay. Similarly, if, 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 if I keep my mirror here. Okay. Generally, light is returning parallel, so either it should retrace from some point. It should either retrace, okay, or but in but in case of plane mirror, this retrace is not possible because for, for retracing it has to hit normally. Here it is possible; it can hit normally, but here it is not possible because the light rays are always going to come at some angle here. In that case, what we can do, I, I can arrange my mirror like this, at this position here, at this position. Then what will happen, that this light ray will be sent in this direction. <laughs> okay. And then they will come out parallel to this. This light ray here, it will be sent in this direction. And then it will it will retrace its path. Okay. So, so I will have to arrange, arrange my mirror in this. Okay. So the point where it, the, the rays are focused, right at that point, I will I, I, I will place my plane mirror. Okay, so what is going to be the answer? This is F. Answer is equal to F. The same thing I can do here also in case of this convex mirror. Okay. I will arrange my mirror such that the light rays hit the pole. They hit the pole. Okay. Then in this case, okay. This is my principal axis. I will arrange my mirror such that such that the light rays converge at its pole here, at the pole. Okay. Then this light ray will be sent in uh, the other direction at the same angle. Okay. And they will come out parallel. This light ray will be sent in this direction, it will come out parallel. Okay. So a parallel light ray finally becomes parallel. Okay. What should be this, this value? This is F. Answer is F. Now there is one other possibility here. I want this type of situation. I want it to retrace. Okay. It can retrace it when it falls normally on the mirror. Okay. When it falls normally on the mirror. I can rearrange my mirror like this. This is lens. This is lens. Okay. Light rays are focusing here, let's say. Okay, this distance is going to be F, the focal length. Now, if I keep my mirror here, if, if, if I intercept uh, these light rays, if I do not allow them to converge, okay. Now, and, and if I keep my mirror such that, such that this point becomes center of mirror, center of mirror. So, all these light rays are going towards the center, 
that means all of them are normal incident normally incident in that case they will simply need this they need okay this is equal to r okay so what is the answer answer is f minus r f minus r okay you see all right this is about ray diagram okay image formation image formation lens formation Let's take one general case. I have this lens. Okay. I have this lens here. Okay. This medium is mu one. Mu one is medium on one side of lens. This is mu two. What is this? This is the refractive index of the lens, the, the, the material of lens, the medium of lens. This is my third medium, mu3. Mu3. This is first surface and this is second surface, two surfaces. Center of the first surface will be somewhere here. This is C1. Center of first surface. Center of second surface is, let's say, Let's say that this is a center of uh, center of uh, second surface. Second, okay. All right. This is center of second surface. Okay. Let's say that. Uh, okay. Let me write it here. C two. Okay. Let's say that my object is uh, somewhere here. This is my object. This is my object. I want to find where will be its image. I need two light rays. This is the principal axis joining both centers. So this is a common normal. So I will take one light ray along this common normal. It will pass undeviated. It will pass undeviated. I need one other. Okay, let's say that I will take this general light ray like this. Light hits this surface here. It hits this surface. Okay. At this point, there will be refraction. There will be refraction from this surface. Now, I need to find where the refracted light will go. Okay. So, what we do? I find normal. I join this point. I will join this point with the center here. This becomes normal. Okay. This line. This line becomes normal at first surface. At first surface. Okay. This is the original direction. Now the light ray is going to deviate from its path. Depending on V1 and V2, it can deviate towards the normal or away from normal. Let's say, let's say that it is deviating towards the normal. Okay. So that's how the light ray is deviating from the first surface. Let's say from the first surface, it deviates like this. Okay. Let's imagine, let's imagine that I do not have this second surface. In that case, the light ray will continue, continue, and it will go and meet the principal axis somewhere here. Okay, so this will become my first image. First image. Let me call this I dash here. <clears throat> light ray will arrive here. Image will form here if I do not have this, this surface. But at this point. At this point, again, there is refraction because the medium changes again. The light ray is going to bend again. Okay. At this point, what is the normal? If, if I join this with center here of this surface C2, this, this becomes my normal at second surface. This is angle of incidence. Okay. Now the light ray is going to bend again. Okay. So let's say that finally. Finally, it bends and reaches here. 
So this, this is going to become my final image. This is my final image. Okay, this distance is uh, u. Okay, this is v. This is v. And uh, let me write this as v dash. Okay, now surface one. Surface one. Okay, the radii are r one and r two. R one, r two. Okay. I will write mu two over v dash minus mu one over u. Okay, is equal to mu two minus mu one over r two. Is that right? Okay. From second surface, surface two, I'm going to write this mu three over v. This medium is mu three over v. Minus minus mu two over v dash. The image that is formed by the first surface becomes an object for the second surface. Okay, that's why in place of u, I'm writing v dash. Image from first surface becomes an object for the second surface. Okay, and this will be equal to mu three minus mu two over r two. If I simply add both of them, if I simply add both. Then this gets cancelled. What I have is mu three over v minus mu one over u is going to be equal to mu two minus mu one over r one plus mu three minus mu two over r two. Okay. This becomes our general formula. Understand this? A general formula. General formula. For finding image, for finding image, okay. Now, understand this. Now we are going to look at one special case. Special case, okay. Lens is surrounded by same medium. By same medium on both sides. Okay, mu one is equal to mu three is equal to mu mu one. Let's say both are same. Okay, so I have this lens. I have this lens. This is mu one. Here also it is mu one, and this mu two. And the radius uh, of both surfaces are R one and R two. <coughs> R one and R two. Okay. Now, so mu three becomes mu one. Okay. So I have mu one over V minus this. This is mu one all right. Mu one over U is equal to mu two minus mu one over R one. Okay. I can write minus here. Minus. Okay. Mu two. I am making this adjustment, little, little bit of adjustment over R. Okay, do you see this? Now what I have is one over v minus one over u is equal to mu two over mu one minus one, and one over R one minus one over R. Special case when the lens is surrounded by same medium on either side, then this is going to be the relation. Okay, now I'm going to clean all this. I'm going to clean all this. Okay. I'm going to clean all this. Okay. Okay. Now, if If q is infinity, if q is infinity, okay, then v is equal to f by definition. By by definition, okay, understand? Okay, that means one uh, over f minus one over infinity is equal to 
mu 2 over mu 1 minus 1 and 1 over r1 minus 1 over r. Okay. So 1 over f becomes mu 2 over mu 1 minus 1 1 over r1 minus 1 over r2. Now very very important formula, very important relation. This is known as lens makers formula. Lens makers formula. Okay. What, what it tells is very important one. Okay. So if I have if I know the radius of both surfaces and the refractive index, refractive index of material, surrounding material plus my lens, then I can find focal length. Or even more important than that. If I want to make a lens of certain focal length, using this formula, I can find what their radius should be, what, what the mu should be. Okay, this can all I we also write it as 1 over f is equal to mu relative, mu relative minus 1, mu relative minus 1 and 1 over r1 minus 1 over r2. Mu relative mu relative is equal to mu of lens over mu of surrounding medium surrounding medium mu relative is refractive index of the lens with respect to surrounding with respect to surrounding okay you understand this now also also 1 over v minus 1 over u 1 over v minus 1 over u. It, it is equal to this whole thing. And what is this whole thing? This whole thing is equal to 1 over f. Is 1 over. What is this? What is this? This is lens formula. Lens formula. Okay. We derived it uh, for uh, a point object, a point object, but it is applicable for an extended object also. Okay, extended object also. Okay, let's look at one extended object. Okay, one extended object like this. This becomes my lens formula. This is my lens makers formula. <laughs> okay, and then let's see. I have this extended object. Okay, so uh, this is my extended or extended object A B A B. Image of this is going to be on principal axis. I just want to find. I just have to find image of this point. Okay, so I can take two standard light rays. Standard light rays. After after the refraction, it is going to pass through focus like this. So I need just one more. I can take any standard one. This is the standard one. Passing through optical center, it goes out undeviated. Okay. That's where I am going to get my image. This is A dash and this is B dash. Okay, this is U. This is U and this is V. This is V. Okay, this thing here is F, focal length F. Okay, so here I get the same relation 1 over V minus 1 over U is equal to 1 over F. Okay, makes sense. Now, one other thing I, I would like to know, I would like to know the magnification, the size of this. Size of this, okay. So, this angle is theta, this angle is theta. I can write tan theta, and this is my optical center O, let's say. This is F here, F here. I will write tan theta, tan theta is equal to AB, AB over OA also equal to a dash b dash over over o a dash okay a b a b is plus height of object plus using the sign convention what is the sign convention this is my sign convention this is positive here negative here upward is positive okay downward is negative okay o a is equal to minus of u Okay, it is in opposite direction. So, u is going to be minus of uh, OA is equal to 
this is minus of height of image. It is downward. So height of image will be minus of this length, minus a dash b dash. Okay. O a dash is going to be equal to plus b. Okay. So what do I get? I get magnification. Magnification m is height of image over height of object. From here I can find out it is simply equal to b over q. Okay, height of image and height of object. Okay, in case of mirror, it was minus. In case of lens, it is v over a plus v over a. That's it. Okay, and uh, okay, I think uh, let's derive one more formula. Note down all the formulas. In the next class, we are directly going to solve problems, direct problems. Next class, okay. Let's say, uh, let's say. Uh, derive one more formula and then uh, we are complete with formulas we just have to solve problems okay so see, we have some time in that time let's uh, derive this formula that is the uh, velocity of image okay velocity of image velocity of image okay you see we are doing it quickly because we have done that already in cases of in case of mirrors. Whatever concepts we developed for mirrors, same thing are going to be applied here also. Okay, exactly same thing. So if if, if you are doing it, if, if you are doing this chapter, this lecture, without doing mirrors, then that that will be a problem. That is going to be a problem. Okay. So whatever concepts, sign convention, everything, uh, the meaning of magnification the significance of the sign of magnification all that we have done it in mirrors okay so you should like uh, do those things first then uh, you should do it here okay otherwise it is going to be a little confusing it, it may become even difficult also velocity of image okay 1 over v minus 1 over u is 1 over that okay now let's differentiate it d over dt 1 over v minus d over dt 1 over u is d over dt 1 over f okay this becomes minus 1 over v square and dv over dt differentiation okay minus okay minus this will become minus of 1 over u square du over dt it is going to be 0 rate at which of image distance changes that becomes image velocity so minus of velocity of image over v square this becomes plus here velocity of object over u square is equal to zero so i get velocity of image is equal to v square over u square times velocity of object velocity of object okay and this is going to be equal to m square velocity of object. m square velocity of object. Okay. Okay, so that's it. Let's uh, conclude here. From the next uh, lecture, we are directly going to do problems.